Okay, hello everyone. Okay, today I'm going to be talking about how I came up with the fantasy map for my current book, James of Gallandar. So this is what I came up with. Um, and as I said in the description, this isn't really the best way of approaching making a fantasy map, but it's the way I did it. So if you want to find out how I did it, stick around and I'll be with you in a second. Okay, hello and welcome back. Right, what I normally do is I start off by talking about what I've done during the week, uh, whatever, and some other things. Um, but if you want to zip ahead to the main content where I talk about how I made the map, go to here. Okay, so this week I've been working on a new map um, that will be used for the second and third books in this trilogy that I'm writing. Um, I'm approaching it in a very different way this time. Um, as you'll find out later, the map I made for the first book um, took a very long time indeed, and I'm not going to repeat that process. Um, even so, the the area that this map, new map covers is quadruple the size of the first map in terms of geographical space. So there's a lot of things to get right um, positions of things and how long it would take to get to different places, that kind of thing. On top of that is the style. I'm changing the style that I'm using a bit to simplify things. Um, and yeah, so I hope to have had it ready by um, today, but um, I think hopefully it will be ready by next Friday. And if not, there'll be the Friday after. Um, I've, I'm expecting to start my new job soon, so I don't know if that's going to get in the way. Um, yeah, so that's that. The other thing, I had some visitors yesterday to the studio. I did a little studio tour uh, for my good friend Dan Dunstan and his fiancée, Sarah. Uh, thank you very much for coming around. Um, and, yeah, we all went for a meal. They they got they paid for a meal for me. It was very nice of them. Um, and then I did my very first book signing. Crikey. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Uh, the first of many, um, I don't think, um, but yes, that was lovely and thanks very much for coming. Okay. The next thing is let's talk about how the, the first book's doing. Um, it's not doing very well. <laughs> okay. So here's the new, um, the graph, um, showing my current ranking. Um, 192,985th in the Kindle store. Um, so it's, it's gone pretty deep now. It's, it's on, well, it's, it's not hit the rock bottom, but it's, it's getting there. Um, and that's due to the fact I haven't sold any copies this week. Um, but I'm trying not to think too much about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. I talked a bit about it last week, um, but I'm trying to just remove myself from that for the time being and focus on the second book. And then once, once that's out, then I'll try and get people interested in it or advertise it, that kind of thing. Okay, that's that. That's this week. So the talking about the map now, um, when I've when I wrote the first book, I didn't really have a map. I didn't the only thing I, I kind of scrawled a very basic outline of a forest and had that on the wall um, with a few places marked in, but nothing of any detail. Um, and I wrote the book without needing a map as such. I mean, in half of the half of the story involves a, a journey of sorts. Um, well, it is a journey, um, <clears throat> but I thought it'd be fun to know where these places are. And I absolutely love fantasy maps anyway. So I was going to do one anyway. So I've had to, when I, when I created, I had to kind of retrofit it to the story. This presented a, a couple of problems, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So I had to turn that scrawl that I had on the wall into something 
more substantial. Um, and so I wanted it to, I didn't want it to look like any fantasy map I had seen before. I wanted this to be quite different. And as um, this is set largely in the forest um, and the Gelders create these kind of wood carvings, I wanted it to look as though it had been maybe printed like, um, like a lino or, or woodblock print. Um, but the level of detail I wanted it would have made, you know, making a, a woodblock print more or less impossible. At, at least for me, it would have been far too detailed. So I opted for trying to draw a map that kind of resembled a woodcut print. So I'm just looking at my, I'll bring a picture up here. Um, this is the first little drawing I did. Um, so I'm experimenting here with a style that, that you could possibly or conceivably turn into a print um, by carving it out. Um, yeah, and, and I'd always imagined this forest kind of tapering up. It's, it's almost like a wave, you know. Um, so that shows that general shape. Um, and there's a few, a couple of rivers there. And to the west, there's a great line of mountains. Those are the most basic parts of the map that, that related to the story. Otherwise, there's a couple of clearings there that, that have villages in them. And, and the main forest citadel, which is sitting on the, on the lake there. So once I had that kind of general layout, I then started having to work out exactly how it was going to look, everything was going to look. The first consideration was, even though it's not to scale this map, I, I, it had to be, it had to kind of work almost to scale. I mean, it's not entirely to scale because I'm not quite sure what the scale is. But for example, here I've got where how long it took to get to certain places. So obviously I couldn't, they had to be proportional, these different places in relation to how long it took to get there. Um, that was quite tricky working out <laughs> when they had been traveling, how far they had been traveling. So I had to go back through the book and work all that out. So then after that, I started working on the details, you know, what, here's some mountains. Um, so trying to draw in the style that I might use for a, a lino cut. So thick, quite thick lines, maybe some cross hatching. I'm not quite sure at this point what I'm going to do. Um, and also avatars for the various places. I wanted little illustrations that represented the main areas. Um, this one, yeah, I'm working on the main House of Galandar, which is the first place James encounters. And there's various sketches here for possible versions. I didn't go for any of those in the end. I went for quite simple versions in the end. Um, and then here I'm, I'm trying to work out how to represent the forest. And so here you can see the different marks that might be made to represent the trunks of the trees, uh, a top to down stroke or down to up, you know, as as though following the path of the, the wood cutting blade. Um, yeah, and I used some of these, as you'll find out later, the, these kind of um, techniques we used. There's another one there of Galandar. And here I'm just looking, oh, there's one there of the House of Garaform which was used in the map. So some of when I when I came up with a nice drawing that I was pleased with, I'll scan it and then incorporate it into the map, which I'll show you in a bit. Okay, there's a few more there. I was I didn't use those various different styles of houses. Here I'm looking at different styles of trees. Um, in the end I went for a very simplified version of these pine trees that actually look like mountains in the in the final one but it doesn't really matter okay so that's some of the preparation i did certainly not all of it because i'm quite obsessive about these things um so then i came up with a drawing an a4 size drawing i'll put that there um this drawing was then scanned um 
and then it was put into Photoshop and that's where the main work began. So the drawing itself probably took a few hours to do, right? maybe even less than that. Um, and then I put it into Photoshop and I started working in a very long-winded way. So I'm just going to quickly go to where the images are. I should have prepared this earlier. Here we are. Right. Here's the image. Right, I'll just swap the camera over. Doo -doo -doo. There we are. Oh, there we are, going off into infinity. Yep, there we are. Lovely. Um, okay, there we are. So this is more or less what it looked like after I'd scanned it. I decided to omit all the illustrations that would form the various structures within the map and just focused on the map itself. In the top left hand corner, you can see what I've started doing. And this is what took so long. So if I zoom into that portion, there we go. You can see what I've done. So the first thing was I, I ramped up the contrast to get the that pencil drawing really dark. And the thing that I liked about it was that the, the lines looked as though they had been printed. They looked like a kind of lino cut print as it was when you zoomed in. And, and those lines look really nice and wavy and broken. And so I used that then as the basis to carve digitally. So <laughs> this is a, a technique I just came up with, which ended up being a really crazy one. But what it is, I use the eraser tool on, on Photoshop and manually carved out every little piece as though I were taking my lino cut tool and carving it out of a sheet of lino. This was very laborious. So when I was working on Photoshop, I was probably zoomed into around about, yeah, maximum zoom on here, but on Photoshop, it wasn't maximum, but that kind of field of view. And so I would go along and manually carve this part out doo -doo 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 around here and then move it on, carry on, carry on, carry on. Now, as you can see, that was a very, very, very small part of what is quite a substantial map. Right. So this is day one. And each of these now are subsequent day um, hours spent. So day two, point one is another hour, point two is another hour. And I very slowly started chopping away at it. I'll go through, I'll go through it now quickly. Um, so I just worked methodically on and on, leaving the hard bits. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to deal with some of these other elements. So I, I just focused on the forest for the time being. Um, and I was quite happy with how it looked. It, it, it's quite, I mean, it's, it's quite a strange looking thing, really. Um, and I think it does retain the quality of, of something that's been printed or carved out. Um, here I've started realizing that I've bitten off more than I can chew. And so I'm thinking, right, I'll cut big areas out and I'll cut and paste bits of forest from other areas just to make it slightly um, easier. So here we are, big chunks going here. Clean all that out. Uh, but the, the smaller parts I had to manually do in one piece. So I'm going around here cleaning it all out. So here's the first instance where I've I go back. So this area I've copy copy and pasted from that this large area on the left and I've started to put that in, fill in the gaps. I'm cleaning those mountains now. OK, so I'm starting to fill in the forest. You can see where I'm starting to overlay. Now this bit here. But even these overlays were quite hard to do. So if I stop here, you've got this fairly transparent layer where I'm trying to marry them up. And it's not simply a question of, of stamping it down and filling it all in with trees. I had to make sure that the joins all married up because it's such a curly, intricate design. 
those those borders between copying and pasting uh, were really noticeable when they didn't meet. So I had to manually go over and redraw those areas where they met. Um, <laughs> oh, there I've taken it all away and put it back. Now I'm cleaning out those rivers, working on that area there. Absolutely crazy. So I spent roughly, well, it was well over 100 hours. <laughs> and so I imagine there are other artists that might watch this and thinking I'm, I've completely lost the plot. But I don't know. Once I'd, once I'd got so far in, I, I realized I wasn't able to stop. Um, and I had to just see it through to the end. Um, but I, I think I achieved an effect that I don't know how else I would have done it. So if I zoom in here, so these tree trunks, I actually, I manually went in and carved out each of these areas as though I were carving it uh, with a cutting tool. Um, and so that was very, very laborious, but I think the effect is quite unique, um, but I just paid for it in, in time. Needless to say, I will not be doing that in the next map. So let's keep going. We're almost there. Here I'm starting to add little tiny details. Oh, this the citadel here goes through a different a few different iterations. Now experimented with shadows. I didn't want that. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. Um, the simplified waterfall there. Uh, those villages were quite simple. And there we are, the first instance of the typography. I just placed them near enough where these places were, and then I started to incorporate them into the map itself by carving around them, as though they, they sit within the carving itself. If I were to have carved this in a, in a lino cut, this is the way I would have had to have done it. So it's all incorporated in one piece. Uh, here I was just playing around with giving it a paper effect, which I didn't use. Uh, we're almost there, I think. Yeah, just playing around with different placements. Yeah, so there's the House of Gandar in the top left. Um, that's how it ended up looking in the end, quite a simple um, structure. I wanted to keep these buildings as simple as possible not to detract too much from the map itself yet yeah, so this is the very finished item <clears throat> so here i i took a piece of um nice heavy cartridge paper um and i aged it using tea tea bags um allowed it to dry and it, it altered the the paper's quality made it slightly rougher and a bit more porous. Um, and then I stuck it in the printer and printed the image over the top, um, which was good because it, it, it allowed some kind of imperfections to come into the, the print quality itself. Um, I wanted it to look old and weathered. And so uh, my computer's struggling to display this, but you can see the, 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 the inks are kind of bleeding a bit. So it looks even more as though it's a, it's a lino cut print, I think. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, in the end, um, some of these areas won't be explored in the books, as I said before, but it adds another level of detail and they might be explored later on. So there we are, that's all this. So all together, yeah, over a hundred hours of work. Oh, going back into infinity. There we are back again. Yes, um, that was crazy. Um, right, okay, I better stop there now. Um, next week, I'll either be showing you the new map, which I'm doing in a totally different way, um, or I might be talking about um, fantasy maps from other books, my favorite ones. Um, yeah, so there's something to look forward to there. Right, okay, I think that's it, is it? Um, let's think. Do, 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 do. Yes, that's all. Right, okay. Thanks for watching, and um, if all goes to plan, I'll see you on Friday. Uh,
Cheerio.